Just as expected, the EU Enlargement Commissioner Johannes Hahn recommended opening negotiations for Albania and North Macedonia, stressing that despite difficulties in the Balkans, candidate countries have made substantial progress. The DP has accused the police of manipulating footage from the 16th of February when six MPs were sent to the police station to get information on the detainee's situation after the protest. The Bank of Albania has called a meeting with the second tier banks, asking them to broaden their range of credit products, especially for sectors with high potential for return. It's six o'clock on Wednesday, the 29th of May, 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. The European Commission's enlargement package was presented to the European Parliament's Committee on Foreign Affairs today. EU Commissioner for European Neighbourhood and Enlargement Negotiations, Johannes Hahn, recommended the opening of negotiations for Albania and North Macedonia. Hahn stressed that despite the difficulties in the Balkans, these candidate countries made substantial progress. Albania and North Macedonia have embraced the opportunity of the reinvigorated enlargement agenda and delivered on reforms. North Macedonia not only continued its ambitious reform agenda, but also it reached a historic agreement with Greece, resolving a 27-year-old name dispute, setting an example for the entire region and beyond. Albania is pursuing profound reforms, in particular a major transformation of its justice system. All these efforts are testimony to the power of attraction of the European Union, said Hahn. Still, much remains to be done, according to Hahn, especially if the, in the area of rule of law, but he added that the European Union must keep their promises to candidate countries. The European Commission said that Albania has continued to make progress on its EU reform agenda throughout the reporting period. It was also noted that strong polarisation persisted in the political sphere. Albania is moderately prepared in what concerns the reform of its public administration. Albania's judicial system has some level of preparation, as it does in the fight against corruption, the European Commission said. On fundamental rights, Albania complies overall with international human rights conventions and has developed its legal framework in line with European standards, according to the report. With regard to good neighbourly relations and regional cooperation, Albania has continued to participate actively and maintain good neighbourly relations. Important steps have also been taken to address bilateral issues with Greece. Albania has made some progress and is moderately prepared in develop a developing a functioning market economy and continued to align its legislation to EU requirements in a number of areas, enhancing its ability to assume the obligations of membership, the Commission said. During the meeting with the MEPs, it was emphasised that Brussels should confirm the achievements of the two countries as it relates to the credibility of the EU. Commissioner Hahn also stressed that Western Balkan countries urgently need to fight unemployment as this phenomenon has fuelled migration as well as a low birth rate. From a geostrategic point of view, the Commission underlined China's investment in the Balkans, which, a country, which is a country that continues to provide investment despite the difficulties in the region. Regarding the Pristina-Belgrade dialogue, the Commissioner stressed the need to reach a binding legal agreement for both countries and underlined that the imposition of tariffs by Kosovo on Serbian goods has damaged the dialogue. With regard to Serbia, during the presentation of the enlargement package, the need to reform the judiciary and problems with media freedom were underlined. From the data so far, France, the Netherlands and Belgium continue to oppose the commencement of negotiations with Albania and North Macedonia in June, although they did not refute the possibility of a change in attitude. If the German parliament succeeds in approving the negotiations with the countries in early June, then the issue can be put on the agenda of the EU foreign ministers in Luxembourg for June 18th, where harsh debates between member states are expected in a similar fashion to that which was observed last year. The decisions of member states will, however, be guided by the conclusions of the European Commission reports. Six Democratic Party MPs who have been prosecuted under the charge of forcible abuse of police officers have hit back with accusations of their own that the blue uniforms have manipulated the footage. MP Enkeled Ali Bayai said the police prevented MPs from their constitutional and legal rights to receive information and according to him, the General Director, the Deputy D General Director and the Prosecutor of the issue were not present at work, instead enjoying an alcoholic beverage. Democratic MPs stressed that they were facing an attempt of political threat by the government and according to them, the prosecution should have investigated the police under normal state conditions. Tomorrow, Flamur Noka, Enkeled Ali Bayai, Genstrazimir 
Jerry Klebis Baliu, Jemal Junkshi and Anton Frokai will appear before the prosecution to provide clarification about the event. After being sentenced to 10 years in prison by the first instant court, Kalmen Balili has appealed the decision in the appellate court. According to Balili, he has no connection with drug trafficking and the prosecution has no evidence to prove the allegations against him. In the first instant court, Balili's defence team claimed that the phone number from which wiretapping evidence was presented does not belong to their client. Kelmen Balili was surrounded by police on January 15 of this year where he was charged with the trafficking of about 678 kilograms of cannabis as well as money laundering, non-declaration of wealth and concealment of wealth. One of the members of the Habilai group has been redeclared wanted after breaking the security measure given by the Catania court in Italy. Sabahuddin Cela was not found appropriately under house arrest with electronic bracelets and as a result, police have announced an international search. The Serious Crimes Court sent a letter to notify him of his hearing, but his notification was impossible because the defendant was not found at his known address. A similar problem occurred with the notification from the Serious Crimes Court failing to reach Nezar Seitai, accused of being the Habilai Group's criminal accountant. According to the court, Seitai did not receive that notice because, despite being under house arrest, he had recently moved to a new apartment. The failure of the notification letters was given as the reason for the fourth postponement of the trial for the Habilai Group at the Serious Crimes Court, where the next hearing has been scheduled for the 11th of June. The only member of the group that is being tried in Albania is Armando Cocieri, who during the court session requested that no cameras be allowed in the session because of the problems that his family members have reported in Flora. According to Cocieri, his children have experienced psychological issues. The court advised that it would make a decision on that request in the next session. The court of Catania in Italy is judging the members of the group Moisi Habilai, Florian Habilai, Armando Sulai, Meridian Sulai, Nezar Seitai, Fatmir Minai, Trigrens Mazurai and Sabahuddin Celai. Prosecutor Antonio Bonono sought the highest sentence for Moisi Habilai with 18 years and 8 months imprisonment, 12 years and 4 months for Muridian Sulai and 6 years for Nezar Seitai and a suspension of trial for Fatmir Minai. The court decision is expected to be issued on June 19th. Bank of Albania Governor Gent Seiko has asked the banking sector to expand their range of credit products. Speaking, with the meeting, speaking during the meeting with leaders of the banking sector, Seiko urged banks to focus their attention on sectors that offer a high potential for return. The Bank of Albania finds that the banking sector should expand the range of credit products, especially in terms of project financing, to ensure better coverage for both the Albanian economy and the needs of individual borrowers. Put attention to those sectors that offer high return potential, such as agriculture or new innovative businesses in the field of information technology. Complement the range of financial products with derivative instruments to hedge against exchange rate risk, especially for those borrowers who are exposed to it, iterated Governor Seiko. Doctors have asked for the law not to punish them so severely, such as by arresting them immediately for medical mistakes or sending them directly to prison without first taking into consideration the surrounding circumstances. These requirements have been summarised in a draft law presented to the Health Commission, which recommends changes to the penal code for the, doctors, for the punishment of doctors in cases of negligence. Doctors gathered at the hearing of the Economy Committee to make their opinions known. The doctors explained that there needs to be a clear understanding of the working conditions before negligence can be declared. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura, thank you and good night.